Uh, I'd like to uh, um, bring up our next speaker um, from uh, company uh, Q6. Um, can I uh, have you help me and welcome you generally with everybody? Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Please grab that microphone. So, um, for those of you uh, who may not be familiar with the incredibly competitive online video uh, space here in China, uh, Q6 was a, a very successful company here. Um, actually, to back up even further, you know, a lot of people don't know that even before YouTube uh, uh, started, there were um, video sharing sites here in China. So people talk about uh, you know China being a copycat is actually probably really the other the other way around with uh, with that really originating here in China before it started in the U.S. So Q6 uh, was acquired by Shanda, which is a, a large uh, gaming company here, and uh, I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit about you know that. Uh, that transition to, you know, through acquisition and uh, maybe a little bit of background of Q6 and through the, through the gates and into, into Shanghai and where you are today, please. Um, okay, so I, I will start um, talking about Shanda. Um, as you said, uh, um, Shanda is uh, an internet online gaming company that started in 1999 and it's still known mostly uh, for gaming. And it actually created a sector called MMORPG. Um, I don't know um, most people here want to know the concept of the MMORPG stands for uh, Massive uh, Multiplayer Online Role Playing Game. So at any time you can see like uh, millions of people uh, playing. Uh, of course, comparing to the social games like uh, Farmville, uh, the MMORPG are more complex, uh, both in terms uh, of the computing resources it, it requires, um, and also I, I think um, you know, all um, factors comparing to the very simple, for example, the path, the, the game path, a lot more complex than uh, the social games uh, like Farmer. Um So China expanded uh, from online gaming uh, to a lot of other areas uh, like online literature um, and also online video, which is what Q6 is doing, and also the online comic and animation. Um, among those, uh, the online literature is one of the most successful. Um, people outside China may not actually know that well, but it's uh, actually a money making business. Uh, Shanda on that, um, it's, uh, it has. Uh, I think uh, 700 million in RMB each year as of uh, 2011. Uh, it has 70% uh, market share, uh, Shannon literature has. Um, online sharing, uh, Q6 is, which is what Q6 is doing, uh, is an uh, up and coming business uh, in Shannon. But you, if you look at it, there is a common thread uh, in Shannon's business that's content. And uh, lately, it's more of a uh, user-generated content, also known as PC. Um, and in that, I think uh, you can see that Shanna is not just an IT company. Uh, it's actually an interactive entertainment media company. Interesting. Yeah. Can you tell us, uh, just uh, maybe for some people watching, that, that whole uh, literature category, a lot of it is user-generated. User it's not just posting. Uh, just existing literature online. It's kind of a whole new category that I think in Japan, maybe Korea, there's a little traction, but not really seen much in, in the West. Yes, uh, it's kind of very interesting. Uh, when I talk about uh, this online literature uh, to uh, Western investors and uh, colleagues um, in Silicon Valley, uh, they will ask, uh, what is online literature? See, is this like blogging? And I said, yes, it is like blogging, you write every day. Uh, but the difference is that it accumulates into a 300,000 words uh, of fiction. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is indeed, uh, I think in some way, like the sitcom, uh, the, the TV series that uh, in, Silicon Valley, uh, in, in the United States, that uh, uh, it's been written incrementally mm -hmm. and been published like a chapter by chapter. But really, it's a uh, long fiction, mm -hmm. uh, a whole novel like that. Um, and here, if you look at the Shanna literature, it, it isn't like, a, for example, Amazon is a bookstore. 
So it's really a publisher. It's an online publisher, and uh, not only a publisher like an editor uh, that contract an author to write a, uh, a publisher with contract an um, author to write a novel uh, with editor's assistance, but it's really a community. Mm -hmm. The writer would write uh, incrementally, and with a community, with all the feedback uh, from the readers, and so that's the difference. And uh, um, in Shanda, that uh, it's really a content production ecosystem that we've seen uh, the fiction that comes from Shanda literature, uh, it's chapter by chapter, and later would be adapted into games um, that would uh, become a new title in Shanda games or become a TV series. Uh, so it's, uh, it's kind of really interesting uh, this model as well as a platform. Very interesting, yeah, because Nick Young from Kong Jong Wong was talking about how he's really interested in the platform model because it can really sort of level out and really hit and a, and a miss, but if you have a platform then it's, it's okay because people can miss on the platform and it doesn't necessarily hurt you, right? So you can create this ecosystem for other people to write and in some ways, it's very old-fashioned because in the Victorian era, like I think Dickens used to write some of the chapters, you know, and like serialize it um, in newspapers and you know, and publish it in, in that way, right? Now you're just kind of democratizing and letting everybody contribute. If there's a hit, it's a hit. If it's not, then, then it's not. You know? Right. When when I talk about UGC, that I think there's a big difference. It's the size of uh, the user or author contributing. Um, we have over a million, uh, I would say, authors or the one who signed a contract with China Literature. Although, of course, really, like, actually, like contractually, because, because they, they had a revenue share when it was right, yeah. right. But uh, you know, in reality, of course, if I could sign a contract with Literature, but I I don't write that much and I don't earn a lot of money out of that. But I heard that the top 100 authors of China Literature. Mm -hmm. We do have a you know, very handsome income out of that. Which is great because even successful authors in print often complain that they don't even do that well, right? Because it's actually a, a lot is lost, you know, and they only get a very small piece, right? Exactly. But still, I think uh, there is a transition now um, from this uh, you know, paper print uh, books to the online literature, and the authors still feel that they earn less. Um, from online literature than the paper. Um, I, I think that, um, the, this whole sector is evolving just much in a way uh, like early days uh, in the music, digital music um, evolution, and uh, the artists who feel they got less you know, from the online side of the music uh, than the CD, for example. Um, but actually, this cannot stop. And this has to evolve uh, into this digital publishing, uh, whether they were accepted or not. Um, it's uh, really, I think, the market going that way. Whether you like it or not, you're right. Software is eating, eating everything, including who the literature space, and you guys are even just leapfrogging ahead and just making it happen. So, well, speaking of uh, software eating everything, you know, it's interesting here in China that it's uh, it's become a very kind of vibrant. Uh, Competitive market space for, for video. There's you know Ku 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 Six. You know there's ETE. There's also you know Two Go Yoku merger. Uh, how, how do you guys uh, position Ku uh, Go in, in that whole uh, competitive landscape? Um, well, first we're smaller in scale, of course, and uh, um, we're also losing less money uh, in that way. <laughs> losing um, less money. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> um, well. From the content part that we focus exclusively on UGC, uh, that wasn't the case two years ago. We also experimented uh, with uh, a long form, a premier content, uh, but we found out that uh, UGC is uh, where our strength is, and we would like to focus on that. Um, so our role model is uh, YouTube. Uh, unlike other companies, uh, uh, their role model uh, is probably Hulu, or Hulu plus YouTube. Uh, we want to be YouTube. Interesting. Yeah, YouTube is, is really starting to get some... Uh, yeah, it's really kind of interesting it. that uh, if we look at uh, the online video, 
Uh, the whole model is that uh, you're basically moving the TV business model mm -hmm. uh, onto the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you, uh, the user would have a lot of flexibilities, uh, like uh, you can watch the entire uh, TV series one by one, and you can watch anytime and maybe anywhere. Um, so that's an advantage over the traditional TV, which mm -hmm. you have to watch like at 8 o'clock for one episode. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and you watch you know, at the same time tomorrow. Um, th that's certainly you know, one attractive of the internet video. You move um, the viewing of TV content onto the internet. But beyond that, we think uh, one unique feature of internet video uh, is, is user created, user generated. And uh, that's the user participation. Mm -hmm. And you look at the YouTube, and uh, there are like a four billion stream stream each day and they're doing only UTC um, and of course that UTC has its own challenge um, you know what I'm saying is that uh, the content is very diverse and some of uh, are not monetizable or not easy to monetize uh, for example if I would post a, a video of my dog uh, maybe my close friends my family would watch it but it's a small circle, mm -hmm. and uh, big advertisers may not want to. I, to put but if you post a video of a cat, then everybody would watch it. Because everybody knows cats <laughs> on the internet is the way to go, actually. Right. right. Um, so UGC has its challenge. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I think the demand is there. Um, mm -hmm. If you just look at the YouTube, I, I just said that uh, 4 billion streams stream each day. I didn't know that number. That's, that's incredible. Wow, 4 billion a day. Wow. And, and I think about one billion of those are cats. Actually, uh, <laughs> actually you are uh, one billion is on mobile today. One billion on mobile. That's uh, what uh, the figure that YouTube posted: uh, mm -hmm. four billion a day and one billion on mobile. Wow. Mm. Man, I need to catch up on some of my my stats. I, I wouldn't have guessed it was that top, that high, but that's amazing. So, so speaking of YouTube, Silicon Valley. You spent a couple of decades uh, in in the states in Silicon Valley yourself. You were with uh, you were with Apple, and you're also a, a startup guy. You had a company called Voible that was um, in, in the video space doing video security for blockbusters. So tell me tell me about some of the the scar tissue that you got as an entrepreneur in the U.S. and and, and how you you know sort of applied you know how that company's doing and, and, and how, some of the differences you see between Silicon Valley and China. And maybe some of the similarities as well too. Um, <laughs> that's a long story, but uh, just put it short that uh, uh, I, I worked at Apple uh, for two, ten years, uh, for about all together like eight and a half years. Um, I think at the time that uh, twice when I left Apple uh, to uh, go with a startup, uh, I would say that in Silicon Valley, uh, there was a peer pressure that if you were stay with uh, a, long, uh, a large company for long, uh, if you don't go out doing a sub, uh, you are considered really um, someone, uh, you know, I think I was called, uh, once called a tree hugger, uh, things <laughs> like that. Um, you know, basically someone hugging a big tree and uh, cannot uh, uh, live independently. <laughs> um, so I, I, really, there was a peer pressure, and uh, so the first time I, I went out uh, and uh, uh, just uh, the, the company went down the drain along with uh, the internet bubble burst. Um, so I actually went back to work for Apple. YouTube, uh, basically copyright violation, all the pirating their materials, etc. Um, and Hollywood uh, was really, really scared at that time. And uh, the existing technology at the time for copyright protection was mostly uh, using uh, something called watermarking. And that didn't work because that, uh, in order for a watermark to work, you have to put the watermark on the content. And then later yeah. you would identify the content by looking for uh, the watermark you put in the content. And it didn't work because a lot of uh, content uh, were kind of um, take the, uh, re recorded from TV, and uh, some were like a ripped from DVD, and they didn't have a watermark at all, so they could not be traced. Uh, or identified through watermark. And at the time that uh, my startup, uh, we uh, invented technology called a video fingerprint. Yeah, you know. uh, we had a, a name called a video DNA, 
Um, so it, instead of putting some stuff uh, into a video content that we extract something what we call fingerprint and put it in a database, uh, we were successful uh, in the Hollywood uh, computation. We actually did about 12 uh, larger companies, including Philips and Thompson, and scored number one. And uh, later that followed with uh, investment from Disney, Steamboat Venture, uh, and also at and uh, from uh, Strategic Investment. And so that was uh, really, I think, uh, uh, at the time uh, I was so excited uh, uh, so that uh, we were just close to <laughs> YouTube-like success. Um, but indeed, that uh, uh, with, with the investment uh, from like Disney, that uh, we um, basically scored um, every each and every uh, Hollywood studio as our customer. Um, but it turned out to be, um, I would say, a niche mark in a way. I uh, have maybe you know like 10 million uh, to 15 million each year uh, that size and it didn't grow and you can see that uh, Hollywood only uh, has uh, a handful of uh, studios big studios and uh, they're all our customers <laughs> and where do we grow <laughs> um, and so that the company is still existing today and it is it, it, profitable um, but uh, it's uh, on a niche market uh, it's a leader on the niche market um, so I, I think every investor, um, like Nick here is saying, that I think for every investor we look for um, a bigger market. And uh, I think uh, if at the beginning they would say it's only um, maybe, you know, tens of millions of that size market, that they wouldn't invest. Um, so perhaps, that's perhaps, something. but I think you know, the most likely outcome of any startup, even after it's funded, is complete failure, right? So I think as an investor, if you have a choice between a giant win uh, or complete failure, I think another nice choice would be to have a nice <laughs> profitable niche company that can maybe spit out dividends and you know, kind of, you know. Yeah, go well, that. thank you. That's a win, right? Yeah, well, as a technologist, I'm actually um, very happy and very satisfied with the result because uh, uh, when the company started, uh, the so-called video fingerprinting uh, was really an academic concept. And we really made it happen and uh, made the internet uh, scale. Um, really, as a technology, I'm very happy with. That's great. Good story. And, and all that time in the valley, now you're here in China, what's the, uh, what are some of the things you see? I've been kind of a recurring theme here since this is bridging sort of China and the West, so Silicon Valley versus China, China versus Silicon Valley. Yeah, well, in terms of the environment uh, for entrepreneurs, like that? Sure, an environmentally entrepreneur or perhaps, you know, a, a large company like Chanda, you know, operating here. I mean, whatever, whatever, whatever sort of your, however you want to tackle it, because you've been on both sides of the table. Um, I, maybe I would just speak more of, uh, from an entrepreneur point of view. I, I, I think uh, here what I felt is uh, the environment uh, really didn't quite encourage um, the big adventure, the change world. Uh, type of uh, uh, startup, mm. um, you know, like those uh, startup that concentrate on developing some disruptive technology, and it's more I think in the uh, word here is like a micro innovation, uh, and, uh, and and most of them also have the concept that already exists uh, in Silicon Valley. Um, so I I don't think it's just the entrepreneur that they limit themselves. Um, to that kind of innovation or to that type of business. I think from an investor, um, that if it, they look at the business plan and say, you know, do you have a counterpart in Silicon Valley for uh, that kind of business that's a proven model? And I, I think so that's the environment that the entrepreneurs here are in. Uh, and also, I think just as a challenge uh, said uh, a while ago, uh, there is a fierce uh, competition here. Uh, whenever you create something that appears to be successful or just start getting traction, and you get, uh, you will see maybe a dozen competitors just spring up. You're right, yeah. I mean, there was so many Groupon clones, and there's, you know, uh, Facebook clones, and, you know, Twitter clones. So that actually. Uh, 
segues nicely to my next question. So you, you guys are, are quite interesting, Kulio specifically in Chanda, because you were acquired by another Chinese company, which is which is not usually the case. It's usually kind of like get broader and just maybe crush the competition. And, and uh, conversely, you guys are also quite acquisitive. You guys have gone out and used some of your war chests uh, to go up and buy companies uh, outside, like Mochi Media from Silicon Valley. So can you tell us a little bit about that? You guys are fairly unique in that, in that regard here in, here in China. Um, what, uh, what, the, whole, the whole, you know, using acquisition for growth okay. instead of actually, you know, um, yeah, I, I think like uh, any large companies that uh, would consider strategic investment and acquisition, um, I think the same is true with China. Uh, if, you, if you look at the, the uh, companies that, that China has acquired in the past, it's mostly uh, in the content business that I was mentioning, that the dream of the company is um, to be an uh, interactive entertainment media company. Uh, if you look at the sectors of, of the content, it started with game and online literature, video, uh, comics, and animation. And so these are all in the strategic uh, interest. So any of you guys out here, if you want to get bought, I think it's a good to sort of get 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 in line and sort of groom yourself already for you know. You need to be sexy. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Very, very, uh, very interesting. Great. Well, thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Lee Jan, everybody from Shanghai. Thank you.